Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, it's gonna be one more video on Lantastic, but I promise this is going to be the last Lantastic video that we do for a while. But I did wanna show you one more thing. And here's the situation. Let's suppose you have a lovely vintage computer like this Tandy 1000HX. And you have a modern network-enabled printer like this Samsung over here. But you don't have another retro computer to bridge and be a server, say a Lantastic server. Well, in that case, we can rely on virtualization. And that's where this Lenovo ThinkPad in the middle comes in. What we have running here is a Lenovo ThinkPad with Oracle VM VirtualBox and a Windows 95 guest. And what I'm going to show you today is how to set it up. So let's proceed and I'll show you what my process was to get this up and running. So before I start, one thing I do want to note is the directions you see over here on the right are available in my Git repository and there will be a link in the description if you'd like to follow along, that'd be great. So starting out with the prerequisites, it's actually important that you have a wired network card in order to perform this little experiment. Wireless network cards do not bridge as well with virtual adapters, especially when it comes to using protocols other than TCP IP. So you will want a wired network card. Okay, so for software items to locate, first in the list is Oracle VM VirtualBox. If you want to run older virtual machines such as Windows 3.1, I strongly suggest you go with version 6.0.18 or lower. If you really don't care, about running systems older than 95, it doesn't matter. Uh, 95 will work in later versions of VirtualBox with a patch. So in all cases, that's an option. If you do want to download that older version, you can go to the VirtualBox website, go to the download section. And as opposed to just clicking the first ones that are here, you can go down to this older builds section. And then you can go to, in this case, the 6.0 section and find 6.0.18 and it's right there. So that's an option for you. Uh, do whatever uh, suits you best. I'm running version five because actually I loaded up version six today and my screen recording software went absolutely crazy. So there you have it. Okay, next program on the list is WinImage. And we're going to be using WinImage to inject files into our hard disk virtual image once we set up our virtual machine. So we'll set it up and then we'll inject a Windows 95 installer as well as another installer. And that's what we'll be using WinImage for. Next up is this Fix95 CPU concept, which allows us to run Windows 95 in later versions of VirtualBox that have this hardware vert EX enabled flag set to true. Just to give a parenthetical note, in versions after 6.0.18 of VirtualBox, this flag was removed. You can't even set it to false. And that's why we have this patch to help us. So this is definitely something we'll use uh, once again, only required for versions later than this, uh, you can use, get away with not using it in versions that are older, but we're not going to cover that today. All right, next item, need a boot disk. We need a boot ISO, in fact, and we're going to grab a DOS 622 boot ISO so that we can format the drive, FDisk the drive, all that kind of good stuff it's when we set up our virtual machine initially. And let's see, beyond that, you're also going to need to locate your Lantastic installation disks or images and your Windows 95 installer. And then finally, we have the HP standard port monitor, which is what we use to connect our uh, JetDirect compatible printer to the system. So that can be found here. So those are the list of items that you will need to get things rolling. So with the list of items out of the way, let's get to installing. And the first thing you're going to want to do is install Oracle VM VirtualBox. And I've already done that, so I will not be showcasing that today, but it's really basically double click the installer, next, 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 and you're done. WinImage, similar. Once again, I've already installed it, so I won't be covering off on that today, but pretty straightforward to install that as well. That brings us down to this next section here where we can configure the virtual machine. Let's go ahead and launch VirtualBox. And let's create a new image. We'll call it Windows 95 or a new virtual machine, I should say. Next, we'll do 64 megs of memory. Next, 
we'll create a virtual hard disk and it needs to be of type VMDK for greatest compatibility with WinImage, which we will be using to inject files. Next on that. Storage can be dynamically allocated. That's perfectly fine. That way we save disk space. We don't go ahead and allocate a huge chunk of disk space not to be used. That's great. And two gigabytes is fine for Windows 95. We can click Create. Perfect. At this point, we need to go and configure our network card. So we can right click on this and go to settings. Come down here in the network. We'll set the attach to a bridge adapter and choose a real card. And this card, once again, does need to be wired. Now, I have actually not hooked my laptop into the network at this point. You can if you want or your desktop or whatever. Uh, but if you just want to be untethered, <laughs> you can continue to work untethered. It's not critical that you put a network cable in at this point. So we can click OK. Great. Let's go ahead and start up. And we're going to be prompted to put some sort of a startup disk in. Let's go ahead and navigate to that DOS 622 ISO that we've downloaded. And we can click Start. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see what's going on here. Let's stretch that out just a touch. Great. All right, so our ISO has booted. Let's go ahead and run FDisk and select one to create a DOS partition and then one to create a primary and then Y to maximize the size, at which point we get to reboot again. And now let's go ahead and format drive C and make it a system disk by doing a format C colon slash S and we will proceed. Our disk is formatted. Perfect. At this point, we can go ahead and take that uh, disk image and pop it out of the drive. And let's go ahead and shut down our virtual machine. Great. So the next thing we're going to do is actually inject the Windows 95 installer and the HP standard port monitor installer into the image. And we're going to do that using WinImage. So I'm going to go File, Open, and navigate to the C colon users, my username, VirtualBox VMs, Windows 95 folder, and do a star dot star here, and open up the VMDK file. We'll say OK there. Let's go ahead and create a folder. We'll call it W95. Let's go into that folder. Go image, inject a folder. On my desktop here, we should have uh, some files to inject. So we'll go inject, and I'm going to choose the Windows 95 installer. Yes. And that will inject that whole folder in here. And we also need to in inject that Windows, um, the HP standard port monitor. So we'll go image, inject. And there it is. So we'll inject that in. Yes. And now that installer has also been injected into the image. So to summarize, we've injected the Windows 95 installer and the HP standard port monitor into the image. Perfect. With this, we can go ahead and close WinImage, come over to our virtual machine and click Start. And we can proceed to install Windows 95. So to install Windows 95, we're just going to change into that Win95 directory, or W95, and type setup. This will take us to the setup procedure. Typical's fine. At this point, you need to put your license key in. With my license key entered, I'll go ahead and put in my name. And we're just going to click next here. And one thing we're going to want to do at this point is prior to the first reboot, we do need to have that fixed 95 ISO in the drive. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in now so I don't forget. So we can go up here to devices, optical drives, choose an image, and we'll put that in. Perfect. All right. Most common software is fine. No startup disk needed. And from there, it'll proceed to install. Oh, 
Uh, for my installer, I don't have any of the AOL <laughs> executables copied over. Not too relevant in 2020, so that always pops up for me. I just click, skip, 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 and I'm on my way. All right, now we can go ahead and restart. And on the restart, we will see the fix CD boot. We'll press the any key and no to view the readme and the any key again, and it will install. Done. So now we can press the key to restart, and if we're quick enough, we'll get, <laughs> we'll, we'll beat it. But if, we're, if, if not, we can do this again. So I'm just going to go up to my optical drive and remove it. And I'll just come over here and say machine reset. And that's fine. Now we're cooking. And setup continues without any problems. I'm just going to call this uh, VBox SRV server. If prompted to keep files, just click yes. Choose our time zone here. You choose yours. I'll choose mine. And we're not going to set up a printer at this time. So I'm just going to hit escape or you can click cancel. And now we restart. Go ahead and put in a username and a super secret password. And now we get to do the next part of 95 setup since this is 95C, and that's installing active setup. We'll just click through this. Chances are good it'll get stuck on the real player, and I'll just come up here and close it when it gets stuck. And if that doesn't work, we can always reboot. We're all set. I'm going to turn off Active Desktop. Perfect. Now I think it's time to go ahead and install Antastic. So let me go ahead and pop that disk into the drive. Navigate over to Lantastic. We'll choose disk one. Head up here to my computer. Drive A. Run the setup program. Do not run setup 32. It will not work. We'll go ahead and click next and agree to the license agreement. And I'll put in my serial number and verification key. With the key entered, we can proceed. The default computer name is fine and we do want to share drives and printers. And quite frankly, all of the defaults for Lantastic are fine. You can really just go next, 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 next. When you get this error message, just click skip file. Time for disk two. Rinse and repeat for disk three. Just say yes to keep existing files for these. Perfect. Let's go ahead and remove that disk from the drive. And let's restart. Welcome to Lantastic. The next thing we're going to do is configure TCP IP. So we'll right click on Network Neighborhood here and go to Properties and go to Add, Protocol, Microsoft, TCP IP. OK. OK again. Keep the files. Reboot. So at this point, I'm seeing rather long startup times and errors getting addresses. If you want to mitigate this, it's probably time to plug in your network cable. I'm going to keep going here and not do that. But anyway, it is what it is. Okay, so with TCP IP configured and Lantastic uh, installed, let's go ahead and install our HP standard port monitor and set up our printer. So we'll go ahead and run the standard port monitor. This is going to be another next, 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 next scenario. All the defaults are fine and we're done. Piece of cake. So now we can go to start settings, printers and add a printer. Next. Local printer, despite it being on the network, we're going to do this as a local printer. We're just going to print to a network port. 
going to go with an HP LaserJet 4, since that's going to be pretty much compatible with any printer that's PCL compatible. And my Samsung printer is, so that should be fine. Went a little far here. There we go. Next. Any port is fine. You can't create a network port at this point, so we're just going to say next. Printer name is fine. I, it doesn't matter to me. And then we're not going to print a test page. It won't go anywhere. We haven't configured the port. Okay. Now we can right click on the printer, go to details, add a port, go to other, and choose an HP standard TCP IP port. We'll go next, put in your IP address. That's mine. Next. So you'll get this screen here. Just click next. And finally finish. Perfect. We can now click OK here. Now that we're configured, we can close the printer's dialog. And the final thing we have to do is double click on this Lantastic icon here. And when asked if we want to set up additional resources, just click yes. You'll see it share all the drives and your printer. With that, you should be all set. Well, that's what I had for you today. Hopefully you found it informative and enjoyed it. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content to come. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when new content's available. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, definitely give it a thumbs down. Uh, we are certainly using your feedback to determine what sort of videos we make in the future. In the meantime, we can have a look at this uh, printout that we have here uh, that came from the Tandy through the Lenovo to the laser printer. And you can see that, uh, as some people would say, I may have just too many compacts, but maybe we'll buy some more machines to kind of catch up, or maybe we're going to sell some compacts, but it is what it is. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.